Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, we've now seen the importance of nitric oxide in controlling blood pressure. It's this sort of intrinsic mechanism that the cardiovascular system has for lowering arterial blood pressure if it goes up. So, for instance, if the heart overbeats a little bit and starts chucking blood from the venous to the arterial system, what that will cause is it will cause blood pressure in the arterial system to go up. Okay? Now, we want to lower that back down again, basically. So, uh, what we need to do is return the blood from the arterial system to the venous system, basically. Okay, and that will cause the blood pressure in the arterial system to go up, uh, to go down, rather. Now, physics helps us a bit because, as I say, um, when the blood pressure in the arterial system goes up, then that's going to mean the push on the blood through this uh, vessel is going to go up. So the blood flow through this vessel is going to increase, i.e. the blood's going to move faster because it's being pushed more. Okay, that then activates the endothelial cells because they feel this increase in thrust of the blood that's flowing past them. And uh, basically, uh, the endothelial cells then secrete nitric oxide, which causes vasodilatation. Uh, or what causes relaxation of the surrounding smooth muscle cells leading to vasodilatation so the blood vessel gets bigger and that basically potentiates the effect that the physics was doing i.e. it's going to make the flow of blood even larger from the arterial to the venous system so it's going to help return this excess blood that we've got forcing the pressure of the arterial system up to the venous side basically so it's an inbuilt mechanism in the cardiovascular system to regulate blood pressure there's no nerves anywhere in this it's an inbuilt mechanism in the structure of the cardiovascular system you could can disconnect you could cut off all nerve supply to this and it would still work right okay that's what i mean by intrinsic or inbuilt system right now let's discuss what happens when you inhibit the enzyme in uh, the um, endothelial cells which produces nitric oxide. Now the enzyme in endothelial cells which produces nitric oxide is known as ENOS or NOS free. Okay? And the substrate for NOS free is a um, is a molecule known as L arginine. Okay? So what we can do is we can use arginine analogs to inhibit ENOS, basically, and stop the production of nitric oxide. Now, let me show you the structure of one of these arginine analogs. So, I'll firstly show you the structure of arginine, and then I'll show you the structure of um, ENOS. Now, uh, sorry, of this inhibitor of ENOS. Okay, and specifically, it's L-arginine, which just refers to the enantiomer uh, that is the um, ag uh, that is the substrate for. Uh, enos. So let's draw the structure of L-arginine. That's a proteinergic amino acid. So here's the generic amino acid structure with our alpha carbon at the center here and then our amino group up here in the carboxylic acid group down here. Now the R group then of L-arginine is you have meth methylene groups here and you have three of these methylene groups like so. One, two, Free. Then you have a nitrogen off here with a hydrogen and a carbon with an amino group here and then double bonded to a nitrogen with a hydrogen here. Now, the, this is the substrate for the enzyme ENOS which stands for endothelial nitric oxide synthase. Okay. Um, now, the inhibitor that we're going to use is something that's called L-NAME basically. Okay, and this stands for NG, um, NG, um, what do you do, nitro, that's what you put on, NG nitro uh, L-arginine, uh, L-arginine methyl ester, rather, L-arginine methyl ester. Okay, right, so this is the molecule we're going to use to inhibit our uh, ENOS enzyme, and it works by acting basically as an as an as a basically analog of L-arginine, which is going to go into the active site of the enzyme, but then not actually uh, not actually be able to be used to produce nitric oxide. 
Now, let me show you the structure of this molecule. So, um, it's again, uh, it's again an amino acid. Well, almost an amino acid. It's actually a methyl ester of an amino acid. So let's firstly handle this methyl ester bit down here. Now, this basically means that you have um, formed an ester link with methanol, the alcohol uh, consisting of a single carbon. So here, you've stuck a methyl group off this hydroxyl group of the carboxylic acid group of the amino acid. So that's the methyl ester portion. Now let's handle the change that you've made to the R group. Okay, so here are these um, free methylene groups, still bound here. And then you have a nitrogen here with a hydrogen off it. And then this carbon still here. And now what you have is a nitro group bound off this nitrogen here. So here's this double bonded nitrogen down here. And now what you have is a nitro group bound off here. So you have a nitrogen and then it's double bonded to oxygen, single bonded to oxygen here. The oxygen gains a negative charge and the nitrogen gains a positive charge. So let me explain to you what's happened here effectively. What has effectively happened is you've bound this nitrogen to a double oxygen and you've bound it to this nitrogen down here. Okay, so that's this group drawn out again. Now this nitrogen then gets has a lone pair on it basically. So it's formed the free bonds which it likes, but it also has this lone pair. Then what you do is you bring an oxygen atom along. Oxygen has six electrons basically. So it wants to gain two more. What it's going to do is it's going to come effectively and nick one of nitrogens out of this lone pair. So one of these electrons is going to be given to oxygen. So the oxygen becomes negatively charged and nitrogen becomes positively charged. And then nitrogen has a has an electron that is now unpaired. So this one that remained basically that was faithful to the nitrogen that didn't go off with the oxygen. It has one electron now that's unpaired, that electron there. And then oxygen's going to have a low, uh, an unpaired electron as well, this one that it's gained from the nitrogen. So what's going to happen is they're then going to form a covalent bond. They're going to share electrons uh, in this contorted relationship here. And basically, what will then happen is they'll form a covalent bond, and that, that's why the oxygen has a negative charge and the nitrogen has a positive charge, and you still have this covalent bond between them. So that's effectively what's happened there. This is what's known, by the way, as a nitro group in chemistry. This sort of um, this bit here the, with this nitrogen and these two oxygens off it, that's a nitro group. So that's why this is Ng, nitro, L arginine, methyl ester. Now, uh, this molecule is capable of inhibiting ENOS, which means that you stop producing nitric oxide. Now, if you stop producing nitric oxide, you, um, you um, firstly, you'll you lose this ability to, um, you lose this ability to regulate blood pressure, but even more than that, it's not just that these endothelial cells produce nitric oxide when shear stress becomes too high. There's always some shear stress. There's always some blood flowing through these blood vessels and bashing into the endothelial cells. So there's always going to be some shear stress on these endothelial cells. So they always produce a certain amount of nitric oxide, which means they're always causing a certain amount of relaxation of these, um, of these smooth muscle cells. So if you stop producing nitric oxide because you've inhibited it with L name, what's going to happen is all of your blood vessels are now going to contract because uh, when you stop producing the nitric oxide, the smooth muscle cells stop receiving that constant sort of message to stay a little bit relaxed. So the endothelial cells are constantly telling the smooth muscle cells to relax, basically. And as soon as you block that, the smooth muscle cells are going to over-contract and they're going to narrow up these blood vessels. Now, if you narrow the blood vessel, then what's going to happen is less blood is going to be able to flow from the arterial system to the venous system, and that's going to distort this equilibrium because it's going to mean that blood is going to remain in the arterial system um, and not get back to the venous system in between the two consecutive heartbeats. So it's going to force the blood pressure up still higher. So what this leads to, basically, what this drug L-name leads to is it leads to a hypertension. It leads to two high blood pressure. So L-name produces hypertension. 
and this hypertension can be alleviated by injecting in L-arginine into the bloodstream because if you put a very high concentration of the substrate into these endothelial cells, then L-name is effectively a competitive inhibitor of the enzyme. So if you overpower it with L-arginine, then the enzymes won't see the L-name, they'll only see the L-arginine, so L-name will effectively become, um, become irrelevant, basically, if you give it a high enough concentration of L-arginine, so you can alleviate this hypertension with L-arginine.